What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of the channel. If you guys are new to this channel, my name is Angel. Nice to meet you. So in today's video, as you guys can see, I am at San Luis Reservoir, hoping to get some stripers. And if we hook onto a keeper stripers, we are going to do a catch and cook. Anyways, long story short, so this is the exact location where my dad used to take me fishing when I was a kid. I was like, what, five to six years old? And let me tell you guys, I don't really care if the fish eats out here. I mean, it's not about the catch, guys. The only thing I'm catching is memories, man. The memories I've once had with my pops. Landing a ton of stripers out here, doing a ton of catch and release. I mean, those were them times, man. So basically, I'm out here to bring back those memories I've once had. Because, you know, to be honest, I'm forgetting, you know, my ways of fishing. You know, with all of these offshore fishing inside of the Bay of San Francisco, you know, Half Moon Bay on my Hobie PA-14, open ocean. I have to say, guys, that I've lost my touch doing inshore fishing. So today, I have to make up for that. So yeah, um, let's get to it. Wish me luck. Okay, so yeah. Working with two rods today because I have a two rod stamp on my fishing license. If you guys, you know, have a California fishing license and you want to work with two rod, you do need to purchase a two rod stamp. Anyways, right here, I have two Akuma rod and they're both 10 foot. For the rig setup, I'm working with that Carolina rig. Let's get to it. All right guys, so for my first rod, this is a 10 foot Akuma rod with a 4,000 size BG reel and for my main line I'm working with 20 pound P-line mono. For today's rig I'm working with that Carolina rig. If you guys want more information on this rod spec, my reel, my rigs, my hooks and everything I'll go ahead and put all that information on the description down below. All right so for the Sakuma rod I'm going to work with a four ounce weight and I know what you guys are going to say a four ounce weight? Dude, that's too heavy for this rod. Well, for those that don't know, here's some fun facts about striped bass. Striped bass has no eyelids. So if you're fishing in the morning, throughout the whole day, if the sun is still out, what these stripers would do is that they would go deep inside of these waters. And that reason is because they're trying to avoid that glare from the sun. So go ahead, go ahead, ask me again. Angel, why are you working with a four ounce weight? The reason why I'm working with a four ounce weight is because I want my bait to go far out to where the stripers are hunkering down at. So keep that in mind guys, that's my secret technique. So for my leader line with that Carolina rig, I'm going to work with 25 P-line mono with a size one odd hook. This is a shiner hook. If you guys want more information on my rig setup, again, I'll go ahead and put that on the description down below. So here we go, a simple hook tie. I'm just going to tie up a snow knot. And it's that quick. Done. There we go. I can tie hooks faster than this, but I'm trying to kill some time, guys. Because, again, for those that don't know, stripers would eat early morning like around like 1 to 2 a.m or late afternoon because they're trying to avoid the sunlight guys so once the sun goes down we'll change our four ounce to a three ounce because we don't need to cast it that far that's when the stripers are going to actively eat is when the sun goes down they would come closer so yeah keep that in mind so majority of you guys keep asking me how long do you keep your leader line? Well, I would go to finger to shoulder. And this is what my dad taught me. And the reason why you want to go to finger to shoulder is because you want to grab, you know, the end of that leader line and you want to be able to reach that striper. If you have it too long, you're going to have a ton of trouble bringing that striper in. So yeah, shoulder to finger. Basically like what? I say 30 inches long. Go ahead and just tie a simple knot at the end. One, two, and boom. There you go. Cut off. 
Don't mind my knife. This is my fillet knife. And there we go. Right here with the slider, you have that swivel clip. I don't know if you guys can see that. I hope you guys can see that. You have that swivel clip. And all you need to do is clip just like that. And right here, I have some fresh blood worm. Check it out. I got these baits from Fishery Supplies. You can purchase anything there, guys. I purchased this rod from Fishery Supplies. They gave me a major discount. So if you guys want to visit my local bait shop, it's located in San Jose, California. If you guys want the location, I'll go ahead and put the description down below. So yeah, with that one O hook, go ahead and grab one blood worm. What I like to do when it comes to hooking onto a blood worm is hook it from the tail. Because you want these blood worm to move around. If you don't know where the tail is located, the bigger side is the head. The stringy side, the small stringy side is the tail. And I would hook the tail and you have to be careful because these blood worms do bite. And if you put a lot of pressure into hooking that worm, you'll get squirted on. Blood starts squirting all over the place. All right, y'all. So I'm about to show you guys why we have to work with a four ounce weight on this 10 foot medium light rod or medium heavy, I think. I'm not too sure. Again, I'll put my rod specs on the description down below. So yeah, um, for those that don't know, on this slider right here, you see that little notch? That's where you want to rest your hook. It gives you a good casting distance and some room, you know, behind you. So check it out. Look at how far this, you know, rod flies. All right, guys, casting in. It's been a while, man. I haven't been here ever since I was six years old. Casting in three, two, one. Look at how far it's flying. In the middle of the reservoir. Look at that. Look at this. Look at my spool. Can you guys guess how many yards is that? That's like 150 yards out. And this is why you have to bend the rules by using a heavier weight. Even if your rod specs, you know, is telling you, you know, something different, bend the rules, do it. Because look at this. This is how I'm able to catch stripers. I would break the rules. Sometimes I would break my rod because using, you know, a four ounce weight or a five ounce weight that's not recommended on your rod specs, you can break your rod, okay guys? So if your discretion is advised, if you guys decide to take this route, you can break your rod, okay? Don't blame it on me if you guys decide to do it, but this is the way I've been doing it, and this is how I've been catching a ton of fish. Gotta put that bill. Usually I would listen to the drag, but you know, like I've said, I came out here to catch some memories and this is the memory I once had fishing with my dad it was always using that bell and he would get mad he would get so pissed off every time when I would jiggle my rod he would get so pissed off because he, he would think that you know there's a fish eating I mean I'm sure you guys had that experience when you had your nephews or your kids playing with the rod and you're thinking oh a good hit that's a striper hit but it's your damn freaking kids messing with your rods. All right, y'all. So for my second rod, I'm going to work with some anchovies. Go ahead and cut off the head. Toss that away. And we want to chunk it up just like that. Just like that. For the second rod, I'm working with a three yacht hook. And the reason why I'm working with a three yacht hook is because it depends on the size of the bait you're working with. So go ahead and hook it in one time, just like that. Hook it in one time. Twist your hook and hook it again. 
inside and out just like that make sure your hook is exposed fill that tip oh i thought i forgot my magic thread i love to keep my things organized guys all right so don't forget that magic thread guys you need to wrap up that anchovy because anchovy is really delicate man once you cast it out there majority of the time is that the anchovy will fly out it will fly out your hook just like that done time to cast in In three, two, one. Whoo, look at that, look at that. Sheesh. That went far. All right, y'all, so I'm checking out a different location. This is the second spot where my dad took me. Let's see what happens. At the first spot, somebody decided to fish next to me and was making a ton of noise. And it wasn't relaxing, so I might as well, you know, fish for reals and catch some stripers. I have a feeling today I might limit out because at this location right here, during this time of month, I know for a fact that these stripers are going to actively eat around this time. Let's get to it. About to cook up some rice. And we have this chicken. There we go. Mm. Hey guys! Oh, got him! Striper baby, let's go! What did I say, Andrew? My buddy Andrew showed up. He was like, well, you camping alone, Andrew? I'll be there in a second, buddy. But yeah. We about to do some Captain Cook, baby. Let's go. This is a keeper. Ooh, he's pulling drag. This is when I was cooking rice, guys. Hey, Andrew, can you turn off that pot? Yeah, every time when we're cooking or eating, guys, this is what happens right here. Off the anchovies. Dude, this is big. Ooh. He doesn't want to come, dude. He's stuck in the seaweed and all that. It's definitely a keeper, though. From the head shake, look at that. Oh, dude, this is the pen slammer to the drag setting. It's, too, it's tight. Damn, I've been waiting for this all freaking day. Didn't I call it? What time is it? Four? Didn't I call it? I said that I was going to eat at four, right? Yeah. This is what you got to observe for our next trip. Oh, there he is, right there. There he is. Let's go. Oh, that's a keeper for sure. Oh, he's trying to take me to the rocks, baby. That's a nice little 18. What do you, what do you think? Probably 19. 19. We're pushing 20. This guy is a for sure keeper. I think he's a 20. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, 21. Dude, 21, dude. Yeah, 21 inches. There we go. My eyeballing skills was on point, but not anymore. Getting old. <laughs> Check out that hook set. Damn, that's a nice hook set. Ooh. There we go. A nice 21 inch striper. So, I am going to do a catch and cook. This is going to be for dinner. So, to keep them alive. Oh, shoot, another one. Oh, oh dude. Oh, dude. Oh, man, I was just vlogging, dude. Oh, oh take that out. I'm tangled, I'm tangled. There you go. Got him, I got him. Oh, dude, guys, I was just vlogging. Oh, I just hit my limit. I just hit my limit, dude. Andrew, <laughs> you saw that? Dude, I was just vlogging. I was just vlogging on how to string this fish. Oh, dude. Oh, look, he's pulling. Look at all these weeds, the seaweed. Oh, dude, I think it came off. It's fucking... It came off, dude. Yeah. Oh, no, no, I got him. It's just a bunch of seaweed. Yeah, I got him. Damn, it is active, guys. <laughs> yeah, both rods. This is a brand new rod too. Dude, I'm about to show the viewers that this striper wasn't caught too long ago. I didn't even, yeah, check that out. I didn't even get the string. Oh, it's pulling drag. I need to pay attention. Oh, there he is. Sheesh. Oh. <laughs> because I just hit my limits. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, check it out. I just hit my limit less than five minutes. Just when I was recording on how to string this fish. So back to the subject. The way I would keep this fish alive when it comes to stringing the fish is to not put the stringer into its gill because it cannot oxygenate you know, in the water. So what I would do is I would grab a knife and pierce the bottom lip just like that and then tie my stringer. All right guys, so unfortunately, I'm about to go ahead and head back home because, you know, there's always a situation where I have to handle some things back at home. I wish I could have, you know, stayed longer, but there's nothing else to do. Man, it sucks because what am I supposed to do out here? Stare at the stars and moon? I mean, your boy hit his limit less than five minutes. So there's no more fishing for me. So I might as well just go ahead and call it a day. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed the content of this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Until next time. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to do a catch and cook on our shred bass because I ran out of time. Make sure you guys subscribe to my channel for my upcoming video of that catch and cook. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one.